Okay, now this is chapter 1 from 4 mod maths uh, for the new KSSM syllabus. So, uh, we're going to go through this. Yeah, is this something that you've done before, certain uh, part you've done before in your form 2 uh, mathematics, okay? Uh, in form 2, you talk about a quadratic uh, expression. Uh, maybe I would just uh, go straight, I mean, go through a little bit of this. So, when you have a, a term x, okay, and we add a three in front, this three is called the coefficient. Yeah, I hope you are well aware of that, right? And uh, this x is called your variable, okay? And this whole thing is called a term, right? And in fact, this is a linear term uh, because it's uh, x power one. Now, if I plus with two, two is what we call a, a constant, okay? And if I write the whole thing together, it's called a expression. Expression is basically a combination of terms, right? You can have a single term like 3x or you can add in a, uh, a constant. Yeah, 3x, this is a, a term, a linear term. This is a constant. And maybe I let it be 5. Now, when I write equals to 5, in this case, the whole thing, the whole thing is called a equation. And in fact, it's a linear equation. So, let's talk about quadratic. Yeah. Quadratic, the difference is it has the highest power is power 2. For example, you may have 3x power 2 plus 4x plus 5, minus 5. This is a quadratic expression, okay? As long as you have x squared, it's a quadratic, okay? And you have it in the form of, should I say, a power 2, power 1, or power 0. Now, we can write this as ax squared plus bx plus c. But usually, power 0 we don't write that because power 0 is just 1. C, x power 0 is 1. So we just write this as ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, sorry, you don't have to put equal 0 because this is an expression. So generally, a quadratic expression is written in this form. Now, you can also have like x squared, let's say 4x squared minus 1. Is this a quadratic expression? Yes. Because as long as you have highest power x squared, it's a quadratic expression. However, you cannot have any other power than power 1 constant and power 2. For example, if you have, let's say, x power 2 minus square root x. So this is not a quadratic expression because this is power half. Uh, square root x is power half. Uh, you, we only have power 2, power 1, and a constant. Okay. I'll just go straight to one example, yeah. So example number one. So which of the following expression are uh, quadratic expression? Answer A is yes because it's in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Now B is it quadratic? No, because the highest power is one. This is linear. C is this a quadratic expression? No, because you have this. Uh. Now when I write two of x, it simply means two x power negative one. So it has power negative. So no, it's not a quadratic expression. Okay, let's look at self-test one. This is also fairly simple. The first one, is this a quadratic expression? No, because it's x power 3. Notice that not? Yeah, only power 2. B is a quadratic expression? Yes. Although you can have a... a, a you don't have any terms in x, uh, it's okay one, uh, because you can have 4x squared plus 0x minus 9. So your coefficient of x is 0. So it's still a quadratic expression. Okay, how about this? We have x and y combined together. Is this a quadratic expression? No. Yeah, in order for it to have quadratic, uh, like I say, it must be in this form ax squared, bx plus c, and only one variable x, no y. Okay. All right. Example number two: determine whether this is a quadratic function or not. Okay. Before before we talk about quadratic functions, sorry. Yeah. Before we do this example, now what is the difference between an expression and a function? Okay. A function usually we represent it with a symbol f(x). So. Uh, a general form of quadratic exp uh, function we write like this: uh, f x equals a x squared plus b x plus c. Okay. Uh, sometimes we use a symbol uh, g x, h x, k x. It's not a problem. And sometimes they may use other variable like f t, g h, g y. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So we can use any other uh, uh, variable, uh, provided is a function f x or g x in terms of x and for quadratic, highest power is 1, then you may have power, highest power is 2, you may have power 1 or a constant. Okay, so let's go straight to example number 2. Determine whether uh, the following are quadratic function or not, if it is right in general form. So the first one is a quadratic function because you can see this is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. I just rearrange it. Huh? 
Remember, general form is fx equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, second one, is this a quadratic function? No. First one, must write yes. Huh? No. Huh? Why? Because the highest power is power 3 instead of power 2. All right. Okay, moving on to self-test 2. So here, the first one, is this a quadratic function? No. Uh, no, why not? Uh, because this is 2t minus 8t power negative 1 plus 3. Uh, can you see that? 1 over t in this case is t power negative 1. So it's not. It's not a quadratic because you have a power negative 1. Now, second one, is it a quadratic? Yes, but you need to expand this. Uh, and I hope you still remember your form 2 work, a plus b squared. How do you expand this? a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? So this will be y squared. Uh, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6y. Yeah, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. You times with y is negative 6y. And negative 3 squared is 9. The minus 7 is y squared minus 6y plus 2. This is a general form. So yes, this is a quadratic. Now, by the way, please, I know some students will say, oh, uh, I've been so used to doing this, y minus 3, y minus 3, then I, I expand this way because it's a... Uh, slow and steady uh sorry yeah. slow and steady never win the race that's a myth so this is very very slow don't do that learn how to expand directly yeah it's a square plus 2ab 2ab means uh, if you cannot do it mentally i'm just telling you you can do this uh, y square 2y negative 3 then negative 3 square so this is the pattern how it should look like but I, I would recommend that you just take 2 times 3 6 there's a negative negative 6y just write it straight away Please don't do it this way. This is too too slow. It's not wrong. It's just slow and no point. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the shape of graph of quadratic function. So in form two, you let done graph of function. We have, we have plot the graph, uh, various graph of quadratic. Even you have done cubic and linear. Yeah, using a graph paper. Okay. But now we don't want to draw using graph paper. We just want to sketch. But before you sketch, you got to understand that the effect of the coefficient of x squared on the graph okay so generally uh, if you if you uh, see uh, let me i uh, let me give you a simple example y equals x squared all right so if today you put a draw a table values then you have uh, x and y this negative let's say we put negative 3 negative 2 negative 1 0 1 2 and 3 when you take negative 3 and you square it you get positive 9 negative 2 you square you get 4 negative 1 you square you get 1 0 square is 0 1 square is 1 2 square is 4 3 square is 9 so when you use a graph paper and plot it you see this is negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 0 here 1 2 3 so let's say 9 is over here 4 is over here 1 is over here so when you plot you notice that the graph it's a smiley face graph sorry my graph is a bit ugly so it's a curve like this a parabola we call it and it's always uh, uh, going upwards this way right everything else your y that is always positive right now what happened if you put a negative in front of x square so when you put a negative in front of x square all the y value instead of big positive if you plot using graph paper it's going to look like this right so the other way around so because any number you square is always positive but the more you put a negative in front you make it negative so the graph has a y value that's all negative right so generally we, we don't have to plot using graph paper you just look at the coefficient of x square if it's positive okay maybe i use a highlighter for you uh, slightly lighter not so dark okay now if your coefficient x square is positive we say a is more than zero okay this is bad it's just cover the whole thing so i shouldn't maybe i just underline okay doesn't look very good okay so when you when you uh okay change the color change the color okay when you have a squared positive the graph will be open upwards or we say a u-shape or smiley face yeah like that okay and a is less than zero is open downwards or funny shape okay now you don't have to write the eyes draw the eyes though. okay let's look at one example example number three so identify the shape of the graph okay so when you want to ident identify the shape look at your a my a is two it's more than zero so it's what shape u shape okay or we say a minimum shape sometimes they call it minimum shape so this one you can multiply 15x minus 6x squared now remember 
A is your coefficient of x squared, not necessarily the number in front, not 15. We look at who is having x squared. What is the number in front of x squared? In this case, it's negative 6. So it's less than 0 maximum shape. Okay? Okay, self-test 3. So, okay, in this case, we look at your A. What's your A now? My A is negative 1. Eh? Can you see? Negative 1 here. Less than 0. So, your graph is a maximum shape. Okay? How about the second one? This one, you have to expand it. Eh? This is 5, uh, 6 minus 1. I put 5 and then minus 2. So, when you expand, you can see that your A is now more than 0. So, it's a minimum shape. Yeah? Or U shape. Okay, let's talk about the axis of symmetry of a quadratic graph, okay? A quadratic graph, uh, will, like I said earlier, has either minimum or maximum, but it will also in, uh, intersect the curve at two points, but not necessarily all. Some will intersect at two points, some will have uh, will touch at one point, some will have no intersection like this. But we're going to talk about that only later. But, but right now... Uh, just we just take the case where they intersect two points. So when the curve intersect two points, let's say here, and let's say this value is one and this is five. Okay, one thing about quadratic graph is they are always symmetrical at the center. So when they are symmetrical in the center, we can find the line. We call this the axis of symmetry, and your axis of symmetry is basically the average of your roots. So for example, this is 1 and 3, 1 and 5 add up together, divide by 2. So this line is x equals to 3. Remember, you've done this in your lower form. A vertical line has an equation of x equals to a number. If it passes through 3, we say this line is x equals to 3. Okay? So now, the symbol that we use for the roots, uh, roots is where they cut the x-axis. We use this uh, Greek letter, uh, alpha. This is pronounced as alpha. This is beta. So it's alpha, beta. And uh, by taking alpha plus beta, the roots plus together divide two, you get what we call the axis of symmetry. And once you get this axis of symmetry, you can sub inside the equation of the curve. Let's say your function is uh, y equals whatever fx. You can sub inside the coordinate and you can find the y value, yeah, the value, minimum value or the maximum value of the curve. Okay, I think I'll just show you one example. But sometimes, uh, sometimes the graph may not intercept like I say, it may not cut the x-axis. So, but we know because of the symmetrical nature of the graph, right? Like in the example 4 here. I can draw a line here. And you can see these two points here, they are at the same level. This coordinate is actually 0, 4. If you write in coordinate form, 0, 4. This is 6, 4. So that means this is 6. This is 0. They are at the same level. So we can just take the midpoint, right? We can just take the midpoint. Okay, by the way, the question says, find the roots of this equation gx equals to 4. Now, gx is your graph. That means when your graph, okay, maybe I use a different color pen, okay. When your graph is y equals gx and your gx is 4. 4 is here, right? This line is y equals to 4. A horizontal line is always in the form of y equals to something. In this case, y equals 4 because it passes through 4. The question is, when your y equals to 4, what are my x value? Roots means your x value here. So my x value, as you can see, is a move it down. My x value is either 0 or 6. So we say the roots are x equals to 0 or 6. You can put comma 6, you can put x equals 0, comma x equals 6. Same thing. Eh? And how do you find your equation of the axis of symmetry? Your axis of symmetry, like I say, is the line in the middle. So we say the axis of symmetry is 0 plus 6 divide by 2, x equals to 3. Yeah, x equals 3 over here. Okay, let's look at self-test 4. Okay, so starting from here, the graph is y equals fx. State the roots of the equation, fx equals 0. Now, your fx is your curve here. Maybe I highlight for you using a blue pen. This is your graph fx. Now, when's your fx, when will your fx be 0? Wait, your fx is 0 here at this point. And this point you can see uh, your fx is zero when your x is negative one or five okay so these two are your roots okay how do you find equation x is symmetry we take negative one plus five divide by two answer x equals to two okay have a look at self-test five so here we're gonna go one step further 
and we're going to find the coordinate. Previously, we only find the axis of symmetry. Now, we will find the coordinate maximum or minimum point. Now, if you look at this example here, yeah, example 5, your roots are 1 and 4. So, your axis of symmetry is here, the middle. So, what we can do is we can say that the roots are 1 and 4. So, the axis of symmetry is 1 plus 4 divided by 2, which is 5 over 2. Okay? And to find the coordinate maximum, we need to take this point, this value, x value here, and substitute inside this equation. Now, you need to use a calculator. If you can't do mentally, uh, use a calculator. Okay, I'm going to count mentally. That is 25 over 4. This is 25 over 2. 25 over 2 minus 25 over 4 is 25 over 4. That means 25 minus 16 over uh, 4 which is 9 over 9 over 4 now 9 over 4 you can write this as 2 1 over 4 so your coordinate you can of the maximum point you can write in a uh, fraction 5 over 2 9 over 4 or you can write in mixed number yeah mixed number is 2 1 over 2 2 1 over 4 up to you both also can Okay, self-test 5. So here we are finding the equation axis of symmetry. So the first thing is I will take the roots, negative 4 and 2. I know my axis symmetry is in the middle. So I take the roots, I plus together, I divide by 2. Negative 4 plus 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Eh? Okay, number 2, you're finding the minimum point. So what do you do? You sub inside your y coordinate. Okay, this will be 1 minus 2 minus 8, negative 9, right? Okay, so your coordinate of your minimum point, we can write x first, followed by y, so answer is negative 1, negative 9. Alright, let's recap something that you've done in Form 2. In Form 2 maths, we also talk about the type of relation. Okay, I wonder whether you still remember Form 2 maths, type of relation. There are four types of relation, one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, many-to-many. So, what is one-to-one? Uh, one-to-one one is when one x value has only... We can, we can draw like this. One x value has only one y value. right? This is one to one. Many to one is when you have multiple x value. For example, uh, one x here and I put call it w maps onto one y. This is many to one. Okay, this is one to one. This is many to one. You can have one to many. For example, one x. This is y and z. This is one to many. And lastly, combination of one to one, many to one. So let's say wx, this is 1 to many, this is many to 1. So combination of it is called many to many. But this is if you were to use an arrow diagram to, to, to see the relation. But now we're going to do the, we're going to find out the relationship, the type of relation using graph. Now the idea is this, we use what we call a horizontal line test. It's very simple, just draw a horizontal line and a vertical line. Maybe I start from here, this point, I draw towards y, I draw towards x. You see, you have one particular x value that map onto one particular y value. So this is called one to one. One x map onto one y. Now the second one, if I draw a horizontal line, you see I cut at two points. One x here, one x here, I call it x1, x2. So you have two x value that share the same y value. So it's a many to one relation. Okay, so let's look at one example. Huh? One example, okay, we are supposed to determine the type of relation for this function yeah you can draw a horizontal line okay and move it down move it down there's one x value one x value here so two x values share the same y value so we call it a many to one relation in fact we can actually make this generalization a quadratic function is always a many to one relation because as long as you have a turning point yeah no matter whether it cuts, uh, it's a maximum or minimum. When you draw a line across, it always cut at two points. You draw a line across the horizontal line test, you always have two x value that share the same y value. Okay? Let's look at self test six. Okay, again, we drew, draw a line, a horizontal line, move it up. You can see there's one x value here, there's another one x value here. So this is a many to one relation. Okay, simple, right? 
Okay, now, since we know general form of a quadratic function goes like this, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. So now, we want to know the effect of the number, the constant abc on the type of graph. Now, uh, earlier, I have mentioned to you y equals x squared, it looks like this. If your a is positive, it's a minimum. If your a is negative, it has a maximum shape, or you can call it a... Uh, frowny face yeah shape this one is a minimum we call it a minimum because it has a lowest point or a smiley face this is a, a, a maximum we call it because it has a frowny face like okay so if a is positive minimum a is negative maximum now what happened if you have a value that is bigger than one or smaller than one now here uh, we regardless whether it's uh, positive or negative uh, we are interested in the magnitude now this symbol here we call it a modus means magnitude yeah uh, it doesn't matter whether a is positive or negative okay example uh, y equals to 2x squared now if you have 2x squared the graph is actually narrower or you can say the width is smaller yeah it's narrower yeah or width is smaller now let me draw another graph Let's say I draw the normal y equals x square. The red line is y equals x square. The blue line, the, the black line is y equals 2x square. Now, if I were to add in here, when this is x equals 1, normally x square, if I draw dot line, your y is 1. Yeah, when you sub x equals 1, your y is 1. But when you move this up for 2x square, when x equals 1, your y is now 2. That's why the graph is actually narrower or the width is smaller, you can say that. Now, on the other hand, if you have y equals to half x squared, maybe I draw another one here, okay, the graph will now be broader, half x squared, okay. Uh, let's contrast or compare with the normal x squared, say normal x squared is this, y equals to x squared, alright, uh, and I draw a dotted line here. So normally when x is 1, your y is 1, but now when x is 1, your y is only half for half x squared so the in this case is actually broader broader or we say the width uh, increases now this not only works for uh, positive x squared like i say negative x squared is the same thing if let's say i have a graph like this this is negative 2 x squared so it's actually uh, narrower and what if i have a like that negative 1 over 3 x squared so it's actually broader all right so this is the first two now the next one let's talk about b eh? now b actually determines the position of your axis of symmetry whether it's on the left or on the right okay um, so generally okay guys for a more than zero for a okay i need to use a black pen for a more than zero if your b is also positive the graph supposed to be on the right okay I, I start with the left negative first huh? the graph your b is negative the graph is on the right okay for example if i give you y equals to x squared minus 2x a is positive b is negative your graph is on the right the right hand side of your y-axis yeah your axis of symmetry will be here okay if your a is positive this one, sorry, I need to add this. Uh, your A must be positive. Uh, your A is positive and your B is positive. Let's say x squared plus 2x is the other way around. The graph is a smiley face, but it now has the axis of symmetry on the left-hand side. The graph is more towards the left, shifted to the left. Okay, All right? Not the entire graph on the left, though. Yeah, it can, uh, uh, part of it can be on the right okay so the main thing is your axis of symmetry is on the left this is left this is right okay mm -hmm. maybe i just add in this on my notes huh? so please take note about this huh? because uh it may uh you you guys may get confused when your a is less than zero when a is less than zero it has a reverse effect the main thing is, is that your sign must be uh, uh, opposite okay look at this this is more than this is less than if this is less than b should be more than for example 
let's say I have negative x squared uh, plus 2x. If it's negative x squared plus 2x, the graph will be a frowny face, but it's on the right hand side. Yeah? Can you see that? Just now, b is negative, the graph is on the right. Now, b is positive, the graph is on the right. Your axis of symmetry is on the right. On the other hand, okay, maybe I add this, this is part C, this part D, I just to clarify, when your A is less than 0 and your B is also less than 0, okay, both are on the left hand side. Yeah? Okay? Can? The graph looks like this. Your axis symmetry is on the left. Okay? So maybe you highlight 1, uh, maybe I write, move this on a bit, this is 2. 3 and 4. Yeah, please take note. Alright, moving on. Let's look at one example. Uh, oh, sorry, I still have to go through all this. Yeah, that's a lot, lots of things to get to go through. Okay, how about your C? Uh? Effect of C. C determines your y intercept. C is the easiest y intercept where it cuts a y axis. Now, I just give you a simple example. Say I have y equals to, let's say, x squared plus, what do you like? x squared plus 3. So we take a normal x squared graph, you shift it up by 3. So it cuts at 3. And if I give you x squared minus 3, basically you shift it down by 3, negative 3. Okay? This is easy. Alright, let's see what else I need to go through. Mm, all this I'll explain later as we do other questions. So maybe I just look at example 7 straight away. Yeah? Okay. Determine the position yeah, of... Uh, look at the graph. Determine whether A is positive, negative, and so on. Okay, example 7. Okay, look at this. Huh? My A should be negative. Why negative? Frowning face. So we just write negative. Okay, how about my B? Huh? This one is very tricky. Okay, remember if A and B has the different sign, they're on the right. If they have the same sign, they're on the left. So in this case, B should be positive. Yeah, uh, can I remember? Look at this again. Look at this again. Uh, where is it? Here. If your A is negative, your B must be positive to be on the right. If your A is positive, your B must be negative to be on the right. Yeah, negative opposite sign is on the right. Negative sign on the left. Uh, uh sorry, Pos opposite sign on the right. Same sign like A positive, B positive on the left. A negative, B negative on the left. Okay, lastly, C. C is your y intercept. Look at where does it cut? My C is below the x axis. C is also negative. Okay, subtest 7 diagram shows the graph of y equals bx squared plus qx plus r. Okay, look at your, your graph here. It's a minimum smiley face, so my B should be positive. Okay, now your Q is a coefficient x, is on the left, it must have the same sign in order to be on the left, Q is also positive. How about your R? Oh, it cuts a, above the x-axis, your y-intercept is positive, so all three positive, very good. Okay, before we go to the example, Ada, let me explain a, a bit of this concept. Okay, but I have to say this. Uh, this is something that uh, a bit extra may not in your text, may not be in your textbook, but it's good to know to learn about this. Okay, so now, uh, when you factorize a quadratic, you know, when you have a quadratic function, uh, with the roots of alpha and beta, so you know alpha and beta represent where it cuts your x-axis okay and the line in between is called the axis of symmetry so your axis of symmetry is basically alpha plus beta divided by 2 so when you take this quadratic equation uh, I just put it in this form uh, the roots are alpha and beta this one x is alpha x is beta you work backwards bring it over bring it over put together expand it and then you want to compare with the general form ax squared plus bx plus c you take this you divide by a but when you divide by a you get x squared plus b over ax plus c over a uh, and you want to compare this whole expression over here, this one, with b over a. So by comparison, you get negative alpha plus beta is b over a, you divide it. Alpha plus beta is negative b over a. Now, what is alpha beta? Alpha beta is the sum of your roots. When you divide by 2, this is your axis of symmetry yeah? here. It's the same thing here, you can see. And then I just sub inside, 
and you get x equals to minus p over 2a. So x equals minus p over 2a is actually your axis symmetry. So what I'm saying is that you don't really need to find the roots to find your axis symmetry. You just uh, sub in your b, a, a and b value, you will get this. And then when you take this value, you sub inside your general form of a quadratic function, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or fx equals ax squared plus bx plus c, you will get the coordinate. Yeah, see, notice here, your coordinate is here when you sub this inside. Okay, so it's like a shortcut to find the minimum maximum point without even finding the roots. Okay, so let me just go through this. I'll huh? just learn this something extra, like I said. So I want to find my AB. My A is 2, my B is negative, negative 8. So my axis of symmetry is negative B over 2A. So in this case, it's positive 8 over 4, which is 2. This is your axis of symmetry. So by putting 2 inside, you get 2, 2 square, which is 4, 8 times 2 is 16. So this will be 8 minus 16 plus 3, negative 5, right? Okay, so your coordinate or your minimum point or maximum point is 2 minus 5. Now, how do you know whether it's minimum or maximum? My A is more than 0. So we can say coordinate of minimum point. Minimum point, huh? Is minimum because your a is positive. Okay. Okay, self test it. So what is my a? My a is negative one. What's my b? My b is six. Huh? B is the number in front here. So my axis of symmetry is negative b over two a, which is positive three. Okay. Now next, I'm gonna put three inside. Negative three square. Six times three plus five. So this is uh. 9, 9 plus 5, 14. Eh? So, okay, and your A is less than 0, so you have a minimum, okay? So, uh, maximum, sorry. Maximum point. So, your maximum point, maximum point will be, we write X first, followed by Y, okay? The next part, we talk about relationship between quadratic function and quadratic equation. Eh? So, a quadratic function, like I said earlier, is in the form of fx equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When you replace your fx with, let's say, a constant k, and you can rearrange it in this form, it becomes a quadratic equation. For example, fx equals to 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. So, when I write 3x squared minus 4x plus 5, then let's say I equate this with, let's say, 6. So when I bring over, you get 3x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals to 0 now, right? So this is now a quadratic equation. Let's look at one example, okay? So example number 9, they say form a quadratic function representing the product of two consecutive odd numbers in the form of this, okay? Now, what do they mean by two consecutive odd number? So here's the thing, do you know exactly what is that odd number? We don't know. So we we let the first odd number be x. Okay, normally we have to represent it using unknown. Now we know odd number, we have to skip the next number. For example, my first odd number is 5. My next not odd number will be we cannot take 6, we have to take 7. So how do you go from 5 to 7? Then the second odd number will be what? The next odd number should be x. Plus two, right? You got to plus two, you cannot plus one. Plus one, you get an even number. So you got to skip one step, right? One number, one integer. So when you want to write this in the form of function, because the question say product, product means multiplication of these two. We can write this as fx. Your fx should be x, x plus two. So you can expand this and write x squared plus two x. And this will be your quadratic function. Okay, B. Given that the product of the two consecutive odd number is 195, form a quadratic equation in this form. Ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, so what we can do is we can write fx. Here's the product of 195. So we let x squared plus 2x equals 195. Bring it over let it be zero do you have to solve this no you don't have to solve it you just want to write in this form okay 
Subtest 9. Form a quadratic function representing the difference between the square of an integer with twice the value of the integer. Now, this one sounds very confusing. Eh? So, maybe we say the integer, we let the integer be x. Okay? Square of the integer will be x squared twice the value of the integer twice the value means what? 2x and the question is once the difference the difference is let me write the function straight away fx the difference between the square of the integer with the twice the value of the integer so that means the difference between x squared and 2x understand if you find it hard to do it one shot just do one by one yeah, let the integer be x, square of it is x square, twice the value is 2x, difference means x square minus 2x. Okay, B. Given the difference is 63, form a quadratic equation. So my fx is now 63. So we say x square minus 2x equals 63. Bring it over, let it be 0. That's your answer, yeah, in the general form. Okay, example 10. Diagram shows a trapezium. Form a quadratic function representing the area of trapezium in terms of uh, x. Okay, all right. We know that area of trapezium is given by, area of trapezium is half sum of parallel side, maybe I put a plus b times height h. So, we can say this area is half your parallel sides will be this two, uh, 3x minus 2 plus x times your height. Your height is x plus 1. So let us simplify this. This will be 4x minus 2 and x plus 1. I think we can expand this. Uh, expand first, then you divide by 2. Or you want to divide by 2 first, also can. Uh. Maybe I expand first. Uh, half. This will be 4x squared. Okay, I hope you can do this mentally. 4x minus 2x which is still 2x, then minus 2 times with 1, negative 2. Whatever we get, we divide by 2. So that's your a. Okay? That's fine. B. Given that area is 10, form a quadratic equation, this one. So your area is now 10. So to form the equation, just bring this over, negative 11. Subtest 10. The given diagram shows a square base cuboid. Okay, form a quadratic function representing the total surface area of the cuboid in terms of x. Okay, now when you open up the the cuboid, right, you know that uh, you sh should have six faces. Uh. the faces are top, bottom. Okay, this bottom is below here, left, right, front, and back. So you have six faces. So what we want to do is we want to uh, put together the area, total surface area. Okay, let's start with the top and bottom. So you can see that these two can multiply together, right? It's actually x plus 2 squared. And since top and bottom are the same, so I times 2. Okay, now uh, good news is left, right, front, back, they are actually the same because these two has the same length. So let's say if you observe this, the front, uh, front is 6 times x plus 2 your left and right also x plus 2 times 6 so we can say that we have 4 of this uh, 6 and an x plus 2 okay so with that I can expand uh, let me expand the first one uh. this is x square plus 4x plus 4 this is 24 okay I, I do a bit slower here I just times this together first expand 2x square 8x plus 8 24x plus 48 put together this is 32x plus 56 okay then they say the total surface area of the cuboid is 320 now we can let this be 320 
but you got to rearrange the equation. Um, 320 minus 56, this will give us 2864. And notice we can divide everybody by 2. Eh? We can simplify to the lowest term, right? So x squared plus 16x minus 132 equals 0.